Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm Four Nine Seven Five, and today we are taking the Gremlin down our rally course. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rally Series guys, I hope you are all having a great day today. My name is Moldyworm4975 and today we're going to be taking this. It is the AMC Gremlin X uh, down our rally course. It is a rear wheel drive sort of hatchback from the 1970s. The Gremlin X actually has a 5 litre V8 in it but we are going to be upgrading it. And... Um, I'm thinking that this vehicle is actually going to do okay. Um, it's quite a lightweight vehicle, so there might be a lot of wheel spinning. It is only two-wheel drive. A lot of the vehicles I've been running so far have been uh, all-wheel drive. So I want to do a few more rear-wheel drive vehicles. And I thought the Gremlin would be kind of a quirky car, but so far the quirky cars seem to be doing the best on our course. Just look at the last episode with the Mercedes tank pool. Um, but let's go ahead and upgrade the Gremlin here. It starts off at D403. Uh, now, if you've not seen this episode or this uh, series so far, then uh, all the vehicles are upgraded to S1 class and they have to keep their stock drivetrain. They're sort of the only two rules of the series. All the vehicles will get three attempts at putting down um, their quickest time and then at the end we sort of have a little look at the leaderboard so let's actually go ahead and upgrade the gremlin here now doing a few engine swaps we already get the thing up into c class um, it starts off with 150 horsepower we can go ahead and whack in something like this 8.4 liter v10 out of a viper i believe um that puts it up to 600 horsepower and it's still only in C class. Now all the vehicles will be upgraded to rally tyres as well so that will boost the PI a little bit. Um, I'm not really sure what engine we want. Now in the first episode we ran with this, the 6.2 litre V8 in the 2017 Focus RS and that thing did very very well. It is one of the fastest cars, it is right up there on the leaderboard. So. I think we'll run with that again today. As I said, all the vehicles must keep their stock drivetrain, but you can all-wheel drive swap the Gremlin if you wish. Um, as far as aspiration, we can do whatever we want in here, but the aim of this is actually to keep the horsepower quite low, and that sounds very counterproductive when you're trying to go as fast as you can. But what you got to remember is this is a loose surface gravel rally course. So the more power you're putting down, especially in a two-wheel drive vehicle, the less traction you have and actually the slower you go. So if you have something around the three, four, five hundred horsepower mark, you're going to put down a lot better time than something that has 1200 horsepower. So I'm actually going to leave the stock aspiration uh, on the vehicle if the PI allows it, we might have to come back and throw on the turbo or something if we can't quite make it into S1. Um, as far as um, aero parts go, we can put on any aero parts we want. Now, I'm actually going to chuck on some aero parts today. Um, we haven't really been doing that recently. Uh, I'm actually going to keep the weight as well um, because the weight forces the wheels into the ground and gives us a little bit more traction. So I don't really want to remove too much weight. Um, I guess we could go for a blower. Why not? <laughs> it looks terrible. It probably increases the drag. But you guys will be screaming at me to, uh, to add the blower. So we'll do that. Now all the vehicles, as I said, are running the off-road tyre compound. Previously known as the rally tyre compound if you played Forza Horizon 4. Uh, some of the vehicles can only be fitted with the off-road race tyre compound. So... Those vehicles sort of have an advantage, um, but this vehicle is going to be on the rally tyres. I will go ahead and uh, upgrade the width of the tyres as much as possible. 
Now, so far in this series, I haven't actually changed any of the rims on the vehicles. I've kept them stock, so I'm going to continue to do that and just leave the vehicles with their stock wheels. Um, we can go ahead and actually bump out the wheels a little bit, give us a bit more track width. That's actually going to help with a little bit of stability. Uh, when we're going around the corners, that is going to help us. So I'm going to boost them out as wide as possible. It actually looks a little bit better as well. It looks quite mean. Um, how are we doing on PI? We're up to A. Okay, so we're up to um, A class. So that's not too bad. We'll go ahead and put in a race transmission. I'm not going to go for the seven speed. Six gears is more than enough. All you do is sort of change up and down the gears if you have that. We'll go ahead and throw in a rally diff. And then uh, we'll go put some race brakes on here. Now, suspension, we are going to want rally uh, or off-road springs and dampers for this because the Gremlin is quite a low-riding, stiff kind of vehicle. So we need to free that up a little bit. We'll go for some anti-roll bars, front and rear as well. And then we are going to remove a bit of weight. Now, I said earlier I didn't want to remove the bumpers to save weight, but we are going to have to remove... Um, as much weight as possible for the PI sake. Uh, now, engine upgrades in here, we should be able to actually just go uh, full engine upgrades in here. Uh, so that has actually brought us up to S1 class now. Uh, now, originally I said uh, when I started the series, they had to be the top of N S1 class, but quite a lot of vehicles can't get there. So I am now just saying sort of mid-range S1 class. Um, and I'm happy with that. We've got 658 horsepower in the Gremlin, 552 foot-pounds of torque. The thing weighs just over a ton, um, so that's not too bad. We've got a big old 7-litre V8 in there, and uh, the thing is still rear-wheel drive. So... I don't know how the Gremlin's going to perform. I'm hoping it might be quite good. Do I think it's going to be the best vehicle? Absolutely not. It is not going to beat any of the top leaderboards. But it could possibly beat the DeLorean, which so far is our fastest two-wheel drive vehicle. So that will be the time to beat, I think. But anyway, I am now going to do a little bit of tuning and paint the vehicle. And I'll meet you guys at the rally course for our gremlins attempt okay here we go for our first run in the amc gremlin now the delorean a few episodes ago put down a 216 second lap time so that is going to be the time to beat that is our fastest two-wheel drive vehicle so far so i'm hoping we can beat that in the gremlin here now this first run here i'm going to take it nice and slow i'm not going to go balls to the wall crazy i'm just going to get a feel for the gremlin how it's going what sort of traction we have to play around with and actually the gremlin does have good traction this thing is not doing as bad as i thought it would for a two-wheel drive vehicle it is sliding around a lot more than those all-wheel drive vehicles but it is actually quite controllable you can get the slide going and actually predict what the Gremlin's going to do. Stick it into a corner and not worry about it too much. Now, I am only using about half throttle here. I am feathering it quite a lot, which uh, is a little bit of... Uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of getting used to. I don't have traction control, stability control, um, or any of the other assists on. So everything you see here is purely my driving. So if it's spinning the tires a lot, then we're going to have to let off the throttle a little bit. Now, I think third through there was quite good. We could maybe get away with fourth. This thing has quite a lot of torque with that 6.2 litre in here. Well, it's actually a 7 litre now. That is a little bit of a spin out there for the Gremlin. I sort of kept it on the course, but uh, this thing is quite uncontrollable going up the hill here. It wasn't this uncontrollable before. But for some reason it is now coming into the left hander here let's see how we deal with this section we're almost up to the two minute mark now so we're going to have to shave off quite a lot of time on the next run i'm going to have to be a bit braver but i am getting a feel for the gremlin what we can and cannot get away with 
It isn't the worst vehicle I've driven on this series, but it's by far not the best either. That was the DeLorean's time there. This is possibly going to be the slowest run we've seen so far. I need to keep the Gremlin in check here down the hill. That is 2 minutes 25 seconds there. On the hill down here. Oh, we're nearly into the tree and we cross the line at a 2.31.518. That is actually the slowest time we've ever seen on the rally course here. It is almost... 30, uh, 15 seconds behind the DeLorean so if we are going to beat the DeLorean's time we're going to have to shave off quite a lot of time but there was quite a few areas there I was a little bit too uh, generous with the throttle we can maybe back off a little bit I'll try and get it in a higher gear to negate a little bit of wheel spin and hopefully we can shave off at least 10 seconds I'd like this thing not to be the slowest vehicle um, but let's see what we do in our next run Alright, round number two for the Gremlin. Let's see what we do. Straight off the line, I'm going to put it into second gear. I'm only going about half throttle here um, on the tarmac. It has quite a lot less grip on the tarmac than on the dirt. Now, coming down this section here, I was braking quite early on the previous run. The Gremlin is quite a lot lighter than the Mercedes we took in the last episode. So we can actually brake quite late into that corner there now through this section the gremlin is very controlled actually although we do get a little bit of a twitch on the exit there that line through there in the water is actually a little bit better though the water on the right hand side of the third splash seems to be a little bit shallower so maybe that is actually the line to take a little bit on the grass there but not too bad Coming through this corner, most of the vehicles are getting sideways here. The Gremlin is no exception, but we keep it controlled. It's not too bad. Now, this section up here is quite bumpy. A lot of the vehicles that are low riding have issues up here. And the Gremlin is quite a low riding vehicle standard, but it's soaking up the bumps quite nicely. It's a little bit uncontrolled coming into the hairpin. I'm going to go for fourth gear instead of third through here. Again, only about half throttle coming through there, and we are spinning the wheels on the grass. Keeping this thing on the course is important. The second the wheels touch the grass, it is spinning those tyres. So we are going to have to keep this thing on the dirt, but this is a much better run. We are more controlled going up the hill here. A little bit of wheel spin, but not terrible. We're almost topping 100 miles an hour up the hill. So that is not the slowest uh, up the hill we have seen. Now I'm going to go up to 5th and try and negate a little bit of wheel spin. But this thing has so much torque, it's just spinning the tyres in almost every gear. That was beautifully controlled through that corner though. A lot of the vehicles struggle with that corner, but the Gremlin actually performed really nicely through there. This run seems to be a lot better, although every time I say that... We get a little bit of a twitch going, so maybe I won't keep saying that. That was the DeLorean's time match there. Let's see what we can do down the hill. That is already going to be the slowest time again. Let's see if we can at least beat our previous run. We do, but only by two seconds. But that big twitch just near the finish there will have cost us quite a lot of time. I had to slam on the brakes. Um, there was a few areas where I was spinning the tyres again. It's not the easiest thing to drive, this little gremlin, but I feel like we can at least beat the Volvo 850R, which is currently our slowest vehicle with a 224. I'd like for the gremlin to beat that. So let's see what we can do in our final run in the gremlin. All right, here we go for round number three in the Gremlin. This is our final chance to put down a good time in the vehicle. Let's see what we can actually do. We've got a new target now, which is 2.24 seconds. That is the time to beat. That was the time put down by the Volvo 850R. If the, if the Gremlin can beat that time, I'll be very, very happy. I'm going to keep the thing in fifth through most of the course, just to try and... Uh, stop a bit of wheel spin and through here it's actually controllable um through the water splash there on the right um it's a little bit shallower so that is actually the new line to take 
through that section. We've got a little bit of a twitch going on up the hill. Make sure we hit the checkpoint. We're getting a little bit happy in the tail end there. Now coming into this section here. A little bit of a slide, but most vehicles do slide through there, so I'm not too worried about that. This section up the hill here is typically where the low slung vehicles tend to bounce around a bit and the gremlin it is bouncing around a little bit but it's not uncontrollable which is nice now coming into the hairpin here i'm going to knock it down into fourth actually for the hairpin try and keep the rear wheels off the grass so we don't get any wheel spin we still do a little bit but not terrible although we've got a big twitch going on down there coming into these corners and up the hill here i'm going to keep it in fourth and I'm going to go about half throttle and see what kind of mile per hour we can actually put down coming on, coming up the hill here. We're doing about 108 miles an hour. So that was actually less throttle and more mile per hour than the previous run. So that was better through that section. I'm going to sort of early shift up to fifth to try and stop it wheel spinning a little bit. The Gremlin is actually very good through that corner there. That's where a lot of vehicles sort of struggle. That tight right-hander. Now coming into the last couple of corners here. We're actually making good time on this run. Um, we're not going to beat the DeLorean's time, sadly. But if we can beat that 224, then we will be beating the Volvo 850R. It's going to be a close call, but we have done it. A 223.343 is going to put the uh, Gremlin just above the Volvo. And we'll actually have to go to the leaderboard to see if it is faster than the Pontiac as well. Uh, so let's go and have a look. Well, there we have it, guys. That was the attempt for the Gremlin there. Uh, actually quite an impressive showing a 223.343 is going to put the gremlin in 11th place just behind the ford gt70 was also a rear wheel drive american car so uh, not too bad sadly could not quite beat the delorean which so far is our fastest two wheel drive vehicle there with a 216 but it did actually beat the Volvo 850R which was our target and it actually beat the uh, Pontiac Firebird so that is an impressive showing from the Gremlin I knew this thing was not going to be the fastest vehicle down the track I was hoping it may beat the, the DeLorean's time but did not quite uh, manage to do that but nevertheless the gremlin a great little vehicle it was a fun fun vehicle to drive it is a little bit uncontrollable though that is the only thing i will say if you guys are building this for a rally vehicle then you'll probably want to go with all-wheel drive if you are building it but as per the rules of this series that wasn't allowed but the Gremlin here, actually not a bad vehicle. I'm happy with this little vehicle and it actually does look pretty cool. You've got to admit that the Gremlin is a cool looking vehicle. But that's going to do it for this episode. Make sure you tune in next week to see what other vehicle we take down our rally course. And if you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, I'll leave a link to a playlist down below if you want to go ahead and watch those. But thanks all so much for watching, I hope you did enjoy, and I will see you in the next episode.